hi everyone so welcome to today's class so today we will be going to understand some of the basic concept of pricing procedure or some of the key concept of the pricing procedure so in the last class we have seen the what are the questions of pricing procedure already there are couple of videos are already there in the regular classes of pricing procedure or regular mm classes we will be just trying to understand a little bit further more inside the pricing procedure and uh, as we have promised in the last class if i get at least a hundred comments that we need a pricing procedure webinar to understand what is the pricing procedure what is the concept how to configure all of the details if you want to understand from the basic to the advanced level if you want to understand it so if you comment a hundred like if i get a hundred comments then we will be having a webinar on that one so same thing can uh, will be applied to here also if i'm getting a hundred comments or hundred likes at least so we will be planning for a next webinar on next session on the pricing procedure okay so okay so let's start so now here you can see this is a pricing procedure here you can see so in the pricing procedure here you can see there are certain things are mentioned let's say steps counter condition type description from to manual here this is a requirement required this is a statistical indica indicator this is a print indicator this is subtotal this is a requirement this is calculation type this is basic type this is account key this is the accrual so these are some of the things which you can see while you are configuring a pricing procedure now let's understand from each of the basic what are these things and when this will be applicable with a example also so first thing here you can see there is a counter so what is a counter so counter is basically this will be distinguishing between the condition type that will be in the single step so here you can see counter is one and two step is one here you can see first one is one second one is one and here you can see counter one and two so here we can see gross price is maintained as let's say pb00 and pbxx this both of the things are in a step one but there are a counter okay so that you can accommodate two condition type in a single step okay that is basically for the so here you can see here also you can see step number 10 is having one two three counter okay so that is basically for accommodating three different type of condition type here we can accommodate okay so what is the required indicator let's say here if you are placing or if you are maintaining a condition type of the gross price okay so you can maintain that as a required entry okay that you can maintain as a required entry so that whenever in a pricing uh, whenever in a purchase order if the condition type is not getting triggered due to some issue or some errors if it is not getting triggered so you will be getting a error message on that one that mandatory condition type is missing okay so that is basically for the mandate uh, for the required this is the checkbox now before that one there is a manual checkbox is there okay so what is a manual checkbox basically okay i have not added the text for that one so manual checkbox is let's say if you want to add something as a manually okay let's say here i can say pb00 and pbxx two things are there so now one thing i can add it to a manual so that if required i can add this pbxx condition type in my purchase order manually okay if the manual indicator is selected if the manual indicator is not selected manually i cannot enter it in the purchase order okay here you can see there are rb00 rc00 and ra00 these are three are manual condition type here mentioned okay so if i want to enter it manually in the purchase order i can enter okay but if i want to enter this pb00 or pbxx in the purchase order it will show me a warning message or error message as per my configuration that it is not it is not having a manual entry indicator or we cannot enter it manually okay so now next one is a statistical indicator i believe statistical indicator most of you 
have already known what is a statistical indicator so basically if we mark something as a statistical okay so it will be there in the pricing procedure but it will not add to the net price okay so like here we can say there will be certain freight charges will be there okay freight means there will be certain uh, let's say transportation charge will be there let's say i don't want to add that transportation charge to my gross price or to my net price okay uh, not to the gross price to the net price okay so that it will be not calculated as a material considered under a material price okay in that case i will select the statistical indicator so that it will not be added in the net price calculation so it will be there in the pricing procedure price will be calculated but it will be not added to the net price so that is basically the statistical indicator so you can see freight cost might be recorded as statistical condition to track the transportation cost cost without affecting the final price of goods so it will be not added to the goods price but it will be added to the freight okay so what is the subtotal subtotal is basically let's say here if i say uh, some 1 to 4 i will be having one subtotal okay let's say gross price variance quantity so whatever things are there i can keep it as a one subtotal or let's say from the step 1 to the step 10 i can make it as a one subtotal so whatever price will be coming that will be my subtotal one based on that subtotal i can add some let's say taxes or i can add some surcharges i can add something to that one so on the subtotal, uh, subtotal i can add okay that is basically subtotal so you can keep one price for a subtotal let's let's understand uh, like if you are if you are having a salary and from there your uh, let's say TDS is been deducted so there you will be having a gross salary based on that you will be having one income tax component so based on the income tax component you will be getting one so there will be one let's say surcharges will be added okay so that we can say that is a subtotal and that in that subtotal there will be a surcharges will be added okay so that is basically the that is basically the use of subtotal so you could store a net price after discount in a subtotal or let's say subtotal to use the calculate tax okay let's say you are grouping one condi some condition type you are grouping together and you are making that as a subtotal based on that you can further you can apply some taxes or charges if you like to want so that you can make as a subtotal too then you can add some other things to it let's say uh, your freight charges and all you can add that and you can make that as a total price you can make okay net price you can make next one is a requirement so requirement we already discussed this one required is a condition that must meet the condition type to be applied okay okay sorry this is not the requirement okay so this is the required entry and this is the requirement okay so that is a required entry we have discussed so this is a requirement entry now what is a requirement entry okay most of the time this will be asked so in the last session also we have discussed about this process but if you know this then you might have known like in the last class what we have discussed that answer you will be getting okay so now what is the requirement so requirement is a condition that must be met for a condition type to be applied requirement are written by the per they will be writing okay so now let's say you want to have some condition or let's say some discount condition will be applied if certain threshold value will be reaching okay let's say uh, you will be adding let's say you you want to say if the material value will come to 1 lakh or 2 lakh then only there will be a discount will be applied okay so that you can mention in the requirement you can mention that one so certain specific condition if you want to apply you can apply it through a requirement okay let's say um, if there will be certain specific requirement will be there okay that will be achieved by this requirement thing okay so now next one is condition formula for calculation rule condition formula calculation rule now what is the condition formula calculation rule calculation rule let's say 
we can assume a cal calculation formula let's say i want to give 10 percent of discount based on the let's say before the taxes i'm having a taxes after that i am calculating the net price but before that i want to add the calculation rule let's say 10 percent of discount or 20 percent of discount will be there before the taxes okay or before we, we can say price before taxes so that we can mention it in the condition formula calculation rule so here you can see this is the calculation type this is calculation type is there so basic type is basically so here you can see this is for the basic calculation type basic basically this is a condition formula basis defined determines the base value on which the condition will be calculated okay so this is also one important concept okay so let's say for a discount that is calculated based on the gross price rather than the net price so here you can maintain some of the condition formula to satisfy this gross price condition type okay now next one is a account type so what is the account type so directly if you are posting the value to some gl account so directly you can have a account type you can mention some account type in the pricing procedure so that whenever you are for certain condition type if you want to post it to certain gl account that will be possible let's say for the freight condition if you want to put the phrase freight price let's say you are maintaining it as it as a statistical indicator and you are not going to add it to the net price then you can directly maintain some of the gl account to which the freight price will be added okay so accruals next one is accruals so what is accrual so accrual is similarly it is related to your like if if you are putting this account key then you can maintain an accrual key for that one also to pricing to, means uh, where the how how it should determine the gl account okay that that you can mention through the accruals okay so these are account key and accruals these are both interlinked so if you are putting an account key so you have to put a accrual how it will be determining the gl account okay so this is all about the basic concept of the pricing procedure okay here there is a summary table is there so i will be putting this document in the website so as you are finding all of the document type documents in the website so there you will be finding the document so you can download it from there and you can use this document so that's it for today we will meet up again on next class till then bye bye and